More than 11,000 people are now thought to have been killed in southern Asia after an undersea earthquake sent enormous the beach waves. Beach in Thailand, and the crowds flee in fear as a wave approaches. Waves up to 10 meters high engulf the coasts of many countries. Hit so hard by these walls of water, uh, where we've seen the, the greatest numbers of deaths. Devastation here, and along thousands of miles of survivors here evacuated on the island of PP. It was just days after the tsunami event, uh, just the last days of December, and I happened to be reading a news dispatch on the internet that mentioned that there was lots of environmental damage, mainly on shore. And I got to thinking, well, what's going on underwater? The wheels started turning. I thought it might be a great idea to get together a team of experts and come to this part of the world and, and check things out firsthand. The first thing I did was telephone Greg Stone at the New England Aquarium. The two principal organizations that are leading this are the National Geographic and the New England Aquarium, and this is one of now four, the fourth expedition that we've uh, conducted in this manner. On this vessel, we have the world's leading experts on corals, fishes, and other marine life on the reef. And our purpose of this is to document and explore the damage from the tsunami. The hope is that by this scientific expedition, that we'll be able to find ways to better protect and preserve the reef systems and to figure out how long it's going to take for these reef systems to recover. As a layman who's been an enthusiastic diver for the last 40 years, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. As a person who's not only an observer, but who's been put to work. We go underwater and we do a survey of the corals, of the mollusks, of the reef fish, and in general of the damage that might have occurred as a result of the tsunami, but as well of the way the reef looked before the tsunami. So part of the time we are seeing damage, part of the time we're seeing the pristine coral reef system as it is and as it was before the tsunami. It was a real eye-opener to be on this expedition and to see what scientists do when they're on an expedition and they're doing the diving. These guys are up at five in the morning at their computers, and then they're diving three dives a day. They're doing hour and a half, two hour tough dives where they've got their slates, they're jotting down data, they're recording what's going on. Then they come back from the dive. They turn on their laptop computers and they download into that laptop computer all the data that they've gathered from the dive. When they finish that, they then go on the next dive. A very important part of this trip is that we're combining the world's best science with uh, a very strong public education component, and that involves our collaboration with the National Geographic Society. We have uh, David Dubelay, the world's best underwater photographer with us. His uh, colleague and assistant, Jennifer Hayes, also a fine underwater photographer. Coral reefs are one of the great enigmas of the planet, even though they're the most beautiful things. Visually, a coral reef is, is a living tapestry. One coral weaves into another coral with a veil of fish covering them. It's also one of nature's greatest pieces of chaos. It has elements of a Jackson Pollock painting. We find that around some of these islands, we go in the water and we'll find a beautiful coral reef uh, full of gorgeous hard corals, soft corals, fishes, various things. And then we'll go around a rock or around a headland and suddenly we see the effects of the tsunami, what the tsunami left. 
and it has ranged from a complete scouring of the corals uh, being removed from an area which could take up to 10 years for recovery to areas where hundreds of tons of sand have been piled in and actually buried the corals, which is actually uh, more of a 20 or 30 year kind of a recovery time, to areas where we just see a few broken corals here and there, which really is just a couple of years it'll come back. During our early dives in the CERN Islands, we found a passage where the wave, the tidal wave, the tsunami, had been funneled in, and we discovered these uh, huge underwater sand dunes. We documented the, the destruction that those sand dunes caused by knocking out other corals, and that was a discovery made by this expedition that had not been documented uh, prior to this. Most of the reefs that we've seen uh, have uh, ridden up the tsunami perfectly well. The damage has been uh, quite trivial for, for coral reefs. Then opposed to that, in some areas, probably I've never seen anything that's, that's damaged reefs as much as the tsunami has in these uh, places because they've flipped over corals that uh, weigh uh, many, many tons and uh, three, four, maybe 500 years old. And so we're seeing quite a rare event and places has been uh, incredibly savage. Around the Pipi Islands areas we've come across a, a few sites where localized impact has been very major. One of the important indications that we've found is that large numbers of very old corals, four centuries plus old corals, have been tossed over. That to us is an indication that for that four centuries plus period, an event of such magnitude has not taken place in this area. And that is significant. In the areas of maximum impact, the structure, the community structure, has been altered for a considerable time. I mean, it will probably take another several hundred years before, if all goes well, for it to return to what it was like before. And several hundred years is a long time. <laughs> There's a tremendous challenge uh, to photograph these things underwater. You want to see where a coral has been knocked over. You imagine what kind of damage has happened as this enormous wave has churned through these giant pastures of coral. And to find the evidence, to a certain extent, is a bit of underwater detection, forensics, if you will. I think what sets this kind of work apart from other expeditions is that, that we have the highest scientific standards, plus we have the broadest public education reach. And we're going to take this story to the world through the 40 million people that actually read the National Geographic magazine. Uh, and we are also shooting the high definition video of the reefs in Thailand and the tsunami damage that will be brought back to Boston and used in education programs in our IMAX theater and elsewhere. A lot of people don't realize that the aquarium is not just the building that they see with the fish tanks and with the wonderful exhibitions and the education programs that go on there. There's another dimension to the aquarium, and that's the dimension of the global programs the aquarium carries out throughout the world. We're hoping in the future to put together some way where those of you who are interested in this sort of thing to participate on a real level with real scientists in looking at the oceans and trying to conserve and preserve the oceans and what's in the oceans and understand a little about them. That's a really fundamental and important thing that the aquarium is aiming for and it's really important that those of you that have that interest show it 
support the aquarium and come on aboard.